Okay, that was fire. Okay, now we're going to watch the whack one where he did the salt bay challenge, a $1,000 salt bay challenge. In this video. Oh, no, look at this. He's putting cheese all over it. I'll be attempting to spend. Oh, here we go. Here we go. This shit sucks. This is embarrassing. Okay, I'll just admit it across the board. This itself is not. Whoa, what the fuck? Turkish record breaking kebab. Why did this guy go to in Turkey? He caught so much shit in Turkey. Holy fuck, that's awesome. Oh, yeah, <laughs> over $1,000 at Salt Base restaurant here in. Like, I've been there. I've been to this exact restaurant. Istanbul, Turkey. If you don't know. Etiler, did you know? Anyway, uh, so this restaurant. Again, like his OG restaurant was like a very famous, super upscale uh, uh, meat restaurant back in the day. And now that he's like sold out, it, he's a massive scammer. Salt Bay, where the heck have you been? This guy is a cultural icon. He's become part of the uh, lexicon. Oh, what? Nusra or Salt Bay is a Turkish butcher, chef, food entertainer, and restaurateur. His restaurants are known for being very flashy and very expensive. In 2017, he became a worldwide meme, known for suavely slicing thick cuts of meat. The funniest part is like, he's actually like a really good butcher, okay? He is literally a very good butcher. Like, some of the stuff that he does with knives and shit, like, uh, memes aside, is he's not really... Yes, he is, bro. You're fucking crazy. He, he doesn't do that shit anymore, but, like, originally, he was a very good butcher. Meat and showering them with salt. Hence the name Salt Bay. Now, just a few years later, he owns a chain of 22 luxury steakhouses scattered all over the world, from Turkey to the United States. It, from the it's United literally, Kingdom it's to the literally United just Arab branding Emirates. that Some fucked it up. Some of his restaurants have steaks selling for over one thousand dollars, but I've been told that here in Turkey, especially in Istanbul, the prices are much reduced. I'm now at his very first restaurant, the one that started it all. I'm gonna see if we can go in there and spend a thousand dollars on meat products. Here's the other fun part: I did not actually get permission to shoot. I'm gonna uh, hi there. Uh oh, I'm already getting the eye. Luckily, I don't stand out, so I want to see if they shut me down or not. Let's go inside and see how much money we can spend. Amerikalı bir şey demezler. Amerikalı izin verirler yüzde yüz. There is so much meat here. I'm hoping I can come back and show you all this huge, crazy meat selection here. I feel like I'm in a butcher shop. And wine too. Take a look at the wine. Boom. We've just come into the restaurant. They don't seem to care that we're shooting. Although why is he a scammer? People pay a lot to eat at fancy restaurants because. So here's why. Originally, this was a fancy restaurant. At the time and place when Nusret first came out, okay, like I explained already, the different cuts of meat, the different pres uh, preservation techniques were unique in Turkey. They were, you know, commonplace all around the world, but he had brought different kinds of, uh, he, he had brought like dry aged steak and shit like that. All that stuff was like very unique to Turkey at the time. So it was very high quality. And, and um, you know, people considered it to be one of the better uh, steak restaurants. Then he basically now does all this like overpriced gaudy shit. I call it Instagram restaurants. If you ever go to a restaurant and they have dry ice, you know, the ones that like create that smoke when you fucking, when you mix it with water, know that you're not at a restaurant that is trying to serve you the best kind of food, but you're at a restaurant that's trying to fucking... Uh, like, do a little bit of gimmicks, uh, do some gimmicks so that, like, you can post it on Instagram, okay? That's all that it is. Any restaurant that has, like, dry ice or gold flakes, these are things that you can always focus on. If you if you notice they have, like, gold, uh, gold flakes or dry ice, know that you're not at, like, a restaurant that is trying to serve you the best food, but it's trying to just simply uh, serve you an experience so you can fucking post it on Instagram, okay? And, and basically... <laughs> That's all this is now. Uh, it, it's uh, it's underwhelming. It's not that good. Like Poppy Steak in Miami and their 1,000 Wagyu Tomahawk. Yeah, it's Clout Cuisine. Um, $130 gold burger, gold burger at sale at Salt Bay Union Square is a McDonald's patty. It's just not good. Well, the music is super, super loud. Good luck, editors. First look at the menu. And on the first Nobu is a good example of an Instagram restaurant. Yeah, Nobu still has like decent shit that they get right, though. You know what I mean? Ultimately, you're right, though. Uh, there are way, way better restaurants that you could go to than Nobu. But uh, as far as like a good, re like it's a decent restaurant with a price point of like a very, very, very upscale restaurant. Nobu ultimately is still. Uh, Nobu ultimately is still like it, it has decent restaurant. I mean, uh, it has decent quality foods though. 
page, they have their gold page. The most expensive thing I see here is the tomahawk, covered in gold. It's 5,500 lira. That's just under $300 for that giant tomahawk. Not bad, I don't know. <laughs> I think that same exact steak in the USA, and I think it would be three times as much money. If you get the non- Nobu is upper middle class Olive Garden. Nobu is like for all the shine influencers and the fucking, not shine. Uh, what is the other one that everyone on Instagram has that like, uh, The, no, not Shine, the other one. The Info Fashion Nova Influencers, uh, favorite restaurant to go to. On gold version, yeah, that Fashion is Nova. under $100. Plus, so putting the gold on there makes it a lot more expensive, and probably does. Always. Oh, here's another, here's another tip, okay? Let me give you another tip. Caviar is rich people's salt. Okay? Caviar, here's the greatest fucking trick. Here are some other tricks. One, filet mignon, not the best cut of steak. That's just a fucking abject lie. Chefs will tell you that filet mignon is just a marketing gimmick, okay? Number two, good caviar tastes like salt, and it's just good texture. Bad caviar tastes like fucking awful dog shit fishy nonsense. Therefore, caviar, simply salt for rich people. Another gimmick, okay? Uh, the gold flakes, also another gimmick. In a lot of places that you go to, you're not going to have real fucking... Uh, in, in a lot of upscale restaurants or fancy restaurants that you go to... You're not actually eating real fucking, uh, uh, what's the mushroom? I'm thinking, oh my God, I can't believe I'm forgetting the name of the fucking mushroom. Jesus Christ. Uh, the, no, not shiitake, truffle mushrooms, right? White truffle, black truffle. It's not, it's never going to be real. Uh, it's never going to be real truffle. Usually it's just, uh, also overpriced garbage. Um, uh, Gold flakes are literally glitter for your shit. Yeah, it sucks. What's the best cut? Ribeye, baby. Well, the best steak is A5 Wagyu, game changer, snow beef. Oh, my fucking God. Um, a lot of it is not real, but regardless. Don't have any of those in the Midwest. Sorry for you coastal elites. Um, what else? What else? Thanks for telling us, but I'm pretty sure 80% of us never go out to eat. I'm just letting you know. I'm just fucking letting you know, okay? The truffle industry is a big scam. Yeah. Um, what else? That's on my wish list. Wagyu beef? No, Wagyu is is the goat. I'll I'll say it. Yeah, bro. We watch Master Chef. We know we, with you. We know about the truffle thing. No, I'm not even talking about truffle oil. I'm talking about like uh, tr uh, overpriced truffles that like look like real truffle flakes, but they're not even real. Um, what else? What else? What else? Okay, let's keep going. A lot for the flavor, not actually. For round one, I'm gonna get the golden cappuccino, and then I'm gonna get the most expensive starter I could find, which looks to be this right here. Steak tartare coming in at 540 liras. Editor, how many dollars is that? Boom, our first course is here. This is the steak tartare. Take a look at this. They have an image of Salt Bay. Yeah, this is gross, dude, straight up. Like, I, I like steak tartare, but this, like, the way this presentation is so fucking gross, dude. Actually on the cutting board. And then our meat is in the shape of a heart. That is a load of raw meat. And then some crackers on the side. I, I need someone to do some salt bay action on this. Boom, well, here we go. Very nice. I mean, if she, if she did it the proper way, it would go just down her sleeve. Now come take a look at this. What is a golden cappuccino? Well, it's a normal cappuccino. And then they put one slice of gold on top. Let's try it out. Like You're kind of wrong about filet mignon, though. For real, for real. Literally speak to a chef. Any chef. Filet mignon is not the best cut of meat, okay? It's literally just overpriced marketing garbage. Ribeye any day. Way better than fucking filet mignon. Straight up. I'm, I'm right. I'm actually literally correct. It's not the most flavorful. It's the most tender, though. Filet mignon are for people that can't chew. It's just a tender cut, not flavorful. Yeah, it's tender. That's it's bullshit. Like you don't you don't even get like a good meaty flavor from it. It's just it's just not that good. You need to have 
you need to have no filet mignon is a smaller part that's why it's so fucking expensive because there's less of it on the animal it's the same with fucking veal Veal in and of itself is also a bit of a, a a marketing gimmick. Also very tender. You're right that food is conscious consumption just only for showing its social status in general. The cappuccino, I tried to tell you this is so much meat for not that much money. Super delicious. Nice seasonings inside. A little bit spicy, savory, nice, soft, gooey beans. Eight out of 10. I'm getting in the mood. Let's do this, baby. So listen, I just got terrible news. I asked them for the most expensive thing on the menu, the golden giant tomahawk. Guess what? They don't have any giant tomahawks right now. They just have medium-sized tomahawks, and that costs under $100. So I'm going to have to make up for this gap in price by buying wine. Can I see your white wine? They do have some very expensive wines. Let's try this one. Domaine de Henry for Chalmes, Chablais, for Cru Burgundy. Foie gras, foie gras is wild that, it, that it's illegal. Yeah, I mean, foie gras is, is dank. I like, I love that shit. It's a little, it, it's a little meaty. Like it's a little, what is it? What's the term for it? It's a little smelly. Okay. But it's fucking delicious. I love that. That foie is gras. a long name. Let's try this fancy French wine. Very nice. You guys might think I'm eating with someone, but both these glasses are for me. Yeah, it is, it is torture food. Yes, you can really taste the torture in it. Mm. With a nice fruit jam? Oh, fuck yeah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You're right. Boom, course two, right here. The golden burger. On the menu, all it said was not a burger. That looks like a burger to me. Oh no, look at this. He's putting cheese all over it. They're right, it is not a burger. They just destroyed it. <laughs> What? So this is stun food right here. The knife's coming out. He cuts it in half. Oh, there's some cheese left over. He's gonna put that on top so it is completely impossible to eat. Boom, right here we have the Bloomin' Onion. The difference between the Bloomin' Onion here in Istanbul and at Outback Steakhouse is that this one costs about six bucks. No gold, but it does look tasty. For this course alone, costs this much. Editor, put it on the screen, please. Boom, there it is. This looks awesome. I'm gonna get to the burger in a moment. Look at that, that looks delicious. And it smells incredible too. I love Bloomin' Onions. I I'm a sucker for that. I'll, s I'll tell you what, Bloomin' Onion is fire. Also, everything he's eating is like dog shit. It's just fucking dog shit. Seriously, the worst opinion I have, which is overall good because it's just food, but still unethical as shit. Oh, you talking about like how they torture the fucking geese by shoving lard down their fucking throat so they have the fattiest liver possible. And then that makes a extra dank uh, liver pate that you know as foie gras, foie gras. Yeah, I know. Actual Turks eat at that restaurant? I mean, there's like nouveau riche, gaudy motherfuckers in Turkey too. There's a lot of wealth inequality in Turkey. So yeah, I'm sure actual Turkish people eat that as well. But no, it's, it's now like mostly tourist shit. I mean, he, he's branched out of Turkey. But back in the day, it wasn't like that. It's like an onion ring, but, you know, straight. Here's some sauce. It tastes like a dill ranch sauce. Really tasty. Here, french fries. No gold, nothing special, but they are so warm, crispy on the outside. Oh. It's good. This right here is really what I care about. It is a mess. I'm gonna try to find a dry place to put my hand. Everything on here is sticky. Gold, cheese, sauce. There is the inside though. Cooked medium. It looks very nice. Fun I mean, that sauce. looks good. Try it out. Like, it, it, without the gold shit, it's actually probably decent. You know what I mean? Because, like, his meat used to be really good. Ooh, that's delicious. Let me open it up. It's cheese, ham. They took the ham part very literally. Then. Okay, that's not ham. There's no fucking shot that's ham. They are definitely... I'll tell you what. They're definitely not serving ham. Okay? Salam. I'm a, there's no way that's ham, bro. Caramelized onions and then the burger and more cheese and gold. Mm. Even the cheese tastes pretty good. Doesn't taste overly processed. The beef tastes like great quality. I'm impressed. I thought it was it's BS beef. Sun food. And here For I am. Sure. Pleasantly surprised. That's a burger. That's 100% beef. 
So we've had two items so far from the golden menu, the cappuccino and the burger. But next, I'm gonna go with the golden asado. It says it's an eight hour roasted, 24 karat gold coated, juicy and tender short rib. Have you ever had gold? What does it taste like? I've never had it, but I assume it tastes like fucking aluminum or some shit. Probably like less, m less metally than aluminum. Sounds good to me. Right now as they're preparing our third course, I want to take you to the butcher. God damn, socialist, by the way. Literally like a thousand people responded and said it tastes like nothing. How many of you socialists have eaten gold flakes? Holy fuck, dude. God damn, dude. God damn, this chat is rich as fuck, brother. Holy shit, I'm learning so much about my own motherfucking community right here what the heck is this bro y'all are a bunch of fucking fakes y'all are a bunch of phonies dude phony balonies <laughs> i haven't tasted gold all else are fake area to show you all the meat this place has although they don't have big tomahawks let's go right here salt bay merch real gold bricks protected behind a quarter inch of plastic no one's getting in there take a look at this here we've got lamb chops we've got some kind of a kebab here this looks like the mini tomahawks here sausage i think that's just for decoration and then we have some what looks like tenderloin here on this side now that is a tomahawk they look like they're being aged in there but that's not for us today yeah Oh, here we go, here we go. People don't understand, like, and then he's about people don't understand, like, dry aging and shit. Like, literally, when I was growing up, was not a thing in Turkey. Like, it, it, it came to Turkey and, like, blew people's minds. They were like, wow, a, a fucking steak can taste this delicious as a, as a consequence of his, like, preparation and shit. About to do something. Oh, here we go. Dry ice. <laughs> he's going to take the bones out of the rib. See, now. I told you. What did I tell you about the dry ice? Fuck that shit, dude. He gives it a little bang, bang. And then he stabs it? What is the purpose? Please. Oh, it's time for some Just salt? Thunder. Oh, very nice. <laughs> I love the showmanship. It's incredible. So he's gonna cut it so it's a lot easier to eat. Oh no, the gold, the beauty, it's gone away so quickly. Being in Turkey, everything is about the demonstration, coming to your table and making it interesting. Oh no, we're losing fog. Um, gosh, I mean, is uh, the depression is setting in. It was such a high when they came to the table and the gold was there and there was the smoke. And now, I mean, I'm really coming. I hate that. Come take a look at this right here. These short ribs are so soft and they've been braised so long, you can just easily cut it with a fork. I'm gonna scoop that up. Yes. Let's try Edible gold is so cheap, dude. Yeah, I don't even think gold is like all that expensive, dude. I, 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 but it doesn't matter. It's just nasty. Is it, what the I fuck don't. are you doing? Super soft, tender, moist, and super fatty on the inside. I gotta say, the gold, it does look fairly pretty. This is, of course, beef ribs. You're not gonna find a lot of pork ribs here in Istanbul. Not a lot of pork eating going on, but hey, I love a good beef rib. That looks dang. You would think all that salt they're throwing on there would be too salty, but no, it is just right. Just for this course right here, it costs this much. And that's the gold version. There are cheaper versions. You don't get the show, but I refuse to not get the show. We are three courses in. I'm starting to get a little bit full. We have a couple more options here on the golden menu right here. Golden Kuza Kafis, also known as a 24 karat gold coated rack of lamb. You have to get lamb while you're here. Oh my God, people in Turkey love lamb so yes, much. Yes, we do. Cheap? No, it has to be young, innocent. You have to be able to look into its eyes and see the purity of the lamb and then you Kuzu. know it's time to eat its ribs. Let's do this. Hem öperim hem yerim amına koyayım. Önce öperim kuzuyu sonra keserim kafasını yerim amına koyayım. Our next course is right here, boom. That is an entire rack of lamb completely covered in gold. This thing is ridiculous. It is such a shame he's about to destroy this thing right now. Look at that, just piece by piece, cutting it, stacking it. It looks incredible. I gotta say, I'm starting to really like this golden color too. This appears to be part of the tenderloin here. He kind of cut the crust or the skin off of it. He's cutting that down into tender, little delicious, juicy pieces. And then, boom, salt shower coming down. He salted me a little bit too. The last move right here, he takes the oregano, and he lets it just snow down. That is incredible. So I think this is the same kind of meat that's on here. Oh, look at that. Gold. It's like frustrating to see such good cuts of meat get defiled by fucking aluminum foil uh, gold flakes. Hold some pink on the inside. It is literally dripping with lamb juice. Oh, such a different flavor from anything we've experienced so far. This is lamb meat, but it's like that shit's fire. Abi, pirzolaya bak, abi, böyle pirzola mı olur ya? 
Böyle pirzola mı olur amına koyayım? Bakar mısın abi? Senin baban mangalda yapıyor, amcan mangalda yapıyor. Böyle mi yapıyor? Came at all, real clean flavor, super smoky and juicy. Let's take a look at these. I just want to grab like the biggest one from the pile. I mean, you can see the gold still on the rib. That kind of gold is actually not that easy to handle. It is very finicky. All right, I'm gonna pull this off. Oh, looks perfect. Oh my gosh. It is hard to improve on that. This is what those vegan scientists will never be able to reproduce. There is a certain type of juicy that back. speaks to your prehistoric primal urges. Mm. The fat right along the bone, super delicious. So this whole thing right here, it's about 200 bucks. It is not cheap, but I gotta say, this is some of the best quality, most delicious lamb I've ever had in my life. There's one more dish I must try. This is the golden steak, coming in at about 100 bucks. Now, if it was up to me, I'd get the giant tomahawk, but they don't have that in stock right now. So let's go golden steak and finish bacon. Okay, here it is. Yes, take a look. Gold, the final golden steak. It's shaped like America. It's shaped like freedom. Right here is California, Nevada. Oh yeah, we're missing Florida. Take a look at this. The way he cuts these beautiful thin slices of beef. It's sparkling, it's beautiful. Oh, he gives it a little bit of a hit. Yes, show that meat who's boss. The salt appears magically. Oh, we don't have the original salt bay, but we have a pretty good replacement over here. That looks fantastic. Come on, more smoke. More smoke, more magic. What I love here is there's no sauce, there's no nothing. It's just gold and salt. I'm gonna dig right into the middle. It looks delicious. Amazing. It's nice having some lamb and then some beef again. They're both equally juicy, nice clean flavors. I'm sure there's some kind of sauce if you want steak sauce, but no. Why ruin it? It's pretty much perfect already. What's interesting is like most steak houses have pride themselves in, oh, this is the finest whatever meat from the region of whatever. Here they say our precious cut meat, which already means nothing, coated with 24 karat gold. The end. Meat from where? What cut? What part of the cow? From what country? What grade of beef? Shut your mouth, don't worry about it. But I gotta say, have some trust while you're here. Delicious. So let's do a quick price comparison for those of you who think this place might be a ripoff. If you get the golden steak like I did here, it's 2,200 lira, a little bit over $100. But this is actually, they just told me, it's the New York steak. So that is 300 grams, a good size steak for 780. So if you get it without the gold, and then of course without the show, it is 60% cheaper. So you don't have to be as dumb as me, but my gosh, it makes a good thumbnail. Also, bound to impress your wife's parents in case they hate you. The last thing I want to do is they do have one golden dessert. We're going to Okay, so havuç dilimi is is like a fatter baklava. It's incredible. I cannot Have you ever had Iberico Secreto? I mean, I've had jamón ibérico, but I don't know what your if that's like a different cut or a different type of ham. I don't know. But yes, I have been to Spain and I have had uh straight off the motherfucking bone, baby. Mm. Try that out last. All right, I've ordered the golden baklava and I have no idea what's happening. This looks like ice cream. This looks like, oh, that's a golden baklava right there. They have a golden layer on top. They have the pistachio in between. <laughs> So that's Maraş dondurması. Okay, remember how like Turks, the Turkish ice cream merchants will always like fuck with you and not let you get the dondurma, the ice cream. So that's a specific type of Turkish ice cream that's very gummy. It's incredible, okay? It is fucking delicious. Um, mastic, I, th I guess that's what it is, yeah. Mmm. Mmm. It is so fucking good. It is so fucking good. It's got like gum gum. It's got gum gum powers, okay? It's ice cream that ate the gum gum fruit. God, I'm such a fucking loser. Gomu gomu, no. Yeah. It's delicious. It's, it's so good. The consistency is is, uh, is is like thick, surprisingly. We'll show with the Turkish ice cream. Oh, look at that. This is no average mediocre dessert. He cuts it up into a few different slices. He's doing sound effects. Thank you. Okay, I don't like that he like, they baby serve it to you every time. 
ASAP WAP, thank you for the 25 gift. Thank you for the 25 gift subs. I don't like that they're like literally cutting everything up for you like you're a fucking child, by the way. What is happening? I'm a, a, an adult, okay? I can cut my own fucking dessert. I can eat it in the way that I want to eat it. It's not fine dining to cut your food. I've had fine dining. I've never had someone fucking cut my food. You said you could just pay for this or choose not to pay for it, but you missed that. No, I'm just saying, like, it is insane that people pay. It's, okay, once again, it is insane to me that people pay extra to get their fucking shit cut beforehand. It's silly. And, oh, he's taking it away. What is this? Chocolate cake, raspberry cream, not badger chocolate, inside mousse. Do you like it? No. Thank you. Did you see that? They brought extra desserts to tempt me. I didn't even order that, and they just put it on the table. Like, I thought he was gonna leave it here. Like, you want that? You look bad, but no. We've got this, the grand finale, and you know what's wild about this? It's not that expensive. It's like 23 bucks. Baklava is essentially, they've got like a fry. That's insanely expensive for a fucking slice of dessert, dog. That's psychotic. He said it's not expensive. Bro, that's just like three lira, bro. What the fuck do you mean? It's one slice. Tokatlamushlar malı aynen. Amerikalılar anlamıyorlar abi. No Michelin star restaurant will cut food for you? Exactly. I don't know why these fucking fools in the chat are like, no, that's fine dining. It's not. Fried bread, big pistachio chunks and crushed pistachios in the middle, and then there's a bunch of simple sugary syrup that goes all over all of it. So of course, the famous Turkish ice cream inside, and then gold on top, because we're fancy AF. No salt, I'm a little disappointed. At least it could have sent a sugar bay out here. Here we go. Oh my God. Dessert in Turkey is so amazing, so sugary, sweet, ready. They always have- Many Michelin star restaurants do table side service. Are you talking about preparing a specific dish? Because, like, cutting your fucking meat is ridiculous, in my opinion. Like, I've been to nice restaurants, but preparing your dish in front of you is one thing. Cutting your dish, like, cutting a fucking, uh, uh, you know, like, cutting dessert is insane, bro. Can we admit that? Like, that's crazy. Like, homie just brought your plate put the dish on your plate and then cut it for you and dropped it in front of you. That is an insane thing to do. Nuts involved somehow. Very sweet, wonderful texture, beautiful presentation, okay. and a wild mix of temperatures. It is so cold and freezing. That is Bro, that's you're deboning a fish. Also, fine dining from Joe's... Wait, what? Joe's Seafood? Prime steak and stone crab? Bro, this is, this, why is this scored like a fucking Guy Ritchie uh, bank robbery, dude? It's like, yeah, that's my guy, Jimmy the Toothless. He's got no tooth, you see, but we like him anyway. He's going to be doing a bank robbery. Greatest fucking driver this side of Everton. Yeah, no tooth Johnny. <laughs> He's a big... <laughs> it's a big pikey bastard. <laughs> Joe's Seafood Prime Steak and Stone Crab Tableside Dover Soul. Burada garsonluk bir tek Michelin insan restoranlarında mı var? This man saying the P word like he has the pass? Bro, it's my last name. I don't know if you know this. What? 
What? What? What's up? We're looking at Nusret. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call you. How would you do a shake or your gold flake or your money? It's totally worth it. That is a big meal. We have been here for almost three hours. That is what I call a good time when you're here in Istanbul. The only thing left for me to do right now is to go outside, add up all the costs for this entire meal, and see if we hit. What p word, bro? There, there is zero percent chance we have Irish travelers in the fucking chat that are saying Pikey is a slur right now. Shut the fuck up. We're in America, okay? My last name is literally Piker. Shut the fuck up. You're being offensive to my grandfather. No, it, it is like, oh my God. Oh my Lord. There's a, there's always, yeah, I know. I know. It is a, it is a slur technically. It's like gypsy. Okay. Which is also a slur in Europe. Americans don't even fucking understand it. Uh, but yes, you're not supposed to say that. You're supposed to say Romani or traveler. What is the American version of a gypsy? What? I don't think that there is one and you're not supposed to say it. Oh, so we can say slurs when none of that demographic is present? Bro, we are literally racist in this community, dog. Welcome. We are racist. Like, I, I, I got banned for anti-white racism, homie. I got banned for anti-white racism for seven fucking days. Don't make me pull out the pass. I got the pass. Do you see this? Just ban them. Pretty much no one knows they're called Romani here in Europe. I mean, it's just like. Um, hiker isn't. Gypsy isn't a slur either. Just don't say the first one. What is it? You call me that at the bar, I'll deck you depending on your tone. But I'm going to be honest. Not many of them use it as a call out here in the States. They don't know what it means. Yes. <sighs> That guy had 88 in his name, by the way, because you know that ass is not interested, okay? You know that ass not interested in fucking honesty. The person that we fucking banned literally had 88 in their username. You, if you are one of those people in here, okay, if you are one of those people in here right now, you're getting duped by... You're getting duped by motherfuckers who are literally, like, you know, trying to start shit. Anyway... Yes, the homie was 44 years old. That's why his... Yeah, no, he was, he was born in 1988, yes. <laughs> Hit $1,000. Let's find out. Boom. This is the first time I've eaten at any self-paced restaurant. Overall, I love the vibe between being kind of a high-end restaurant, but a casual, fun place, the showmanship. And I got to say, the price, to me, this seems really man. reasonable. Of course, I was getting the stupidly expensive stuff, but the prices are reasonable for the average person who wants to splurge. Imagine being an American and hearing someone called the P word and understanding what the fuck's going on. Yeah, no, it's just like, it's one of those, it's one of those moments where it's like, like there's zero percent chance that statistically speaking there's zero percent chance that this is like legitimately a a uh a, a genuine concern uh in that moment i was just joking about the pikey thing man not trying to derail sorry my father is a traveler i was born in 1988 i can't use my birth year for things because everyone thinks i'm some nazi yeah Yes, 88 refers to Heil Hitler because H is the eighth letter in the alphabet. alphabet. Um, people love, uh, Nazis love doing like numeric uh, call signs to one another. Anyway. A little bit. So, uh, hey, Salt Bay, here's to the future. Maybe we'll meet sometime. Do you know Salt Bay is one year older than me? He's got 22 restaurants. What do I have? I need to get to work. <laughs> That's kind of... GG's. Otherwise, that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. I completely forgot the objective of today's video. I was trying to see.